This is your 612 TV. Well, welcome aboard. Hello, YouTube. Now, today we're gonna do another one of those episodes where we go really in depth into one programming concept. I know maybe this kind of video doesn't work for everyone who subscribed to this channel, but bear with me. For those of you who are into programming, well, the concepts discussed here aren't things you'll be using in your everyday programming life, but there might be a time where you actually need this stuff. So what are we talking about today? Well, today we're going to take a look at what is known as serialization. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and break this down to be as basic as I possibly can. So in programming, we tend to have these things called data structures. They can be as simple as arrays, which is just a collection of information in a list-like form. Or we can end up with really complicated things like nested arrays, arrays in arrays, or things like dictionaries where you have an attribute and a value in pairs. So that's all well and good, right? While we are actually writing the code, we can always find a way to actually read and access these individual pieces of information. The difficulty doesn't come about here. The difficulty comes about when we wanna, I don't know, maybe save this to a file or transmit it somehow. And here's why there's a problem. Now, when you actually have your data structure while running your program, essentially what happens is all this information is loaded into memory so let's take, for example, this particular array. Now you would expect it to be stored in memory, maybe something like this. And then if you want to look at the first element, all I have to do is say this, and your computer knows where to find this information. But then the problem comes about when I actually want to send this entire array to someone else, I have to somehow translate this into some information that can be sent sequentially over a connection. That is our key problem. And you can imagine that for this, the solution is probably pretty trivial. But what do we do then for something more complicated? And this leads us in very nicely to talking about basic serialization. So let's go back to the example that we just saw. Now, I'm sure you can have some ideas about you know, how you want to actually send this over a connection. And the solution is pretty simple. All you have to do is say, okay, the first element contains this, then the second element contains this, and so on. And in fact, that is exactly the approach to serialization. At its most basic, a serialization function will take in your data structure and sort of flatten it out into a string. The string can then be sent sequentially over a connection and the recipient will then deserialize it and reconstruct an object. That in a nutshell is the entire process for serialization. So what about more complicated data structures? I mean, let's say we want to serialize a data structure which looks like this in a memory. How do we start? We definitely couldn't do it by eye because we have no clue how the individual items are related to each other. Instead, we're going to have to trace all the dependencies and form a little hierarchy before we can even get started on a serialization. So let's try this. By first inspecting these three lines, we know that our data structure has three main fields. The first field links us to a name, so we simply fill it in. The second field links us to a number. However, this number is part of a greater collection. Therefore, we have to trace this to completion and note it all down as values belonging to the phone numbers field. The third field links us to another data structure, which in turn has its own three fields. We note these fields down and trace them further to get their values. We can only begin converting everything to a string after we are done with this. Luckily for us, once we have things at this stage, the process is straightforward. I'm now going to flatten this all out into a single string by simply reading the structure from top to bottom. Every time there is a nested structure, I denote it with additional brackets. The square brackets denote an array, which is a simple list of items, whereas the curly braces denote a dictionary, where all entries are named. In fact, the syntax I'm using here is a formal syntax called JSON. More on this later in the episode. So when you're done with your serialization, you realize that the string you've produced is now very complicated and ugly, and it contains all these different nested arrays. Now, it doesn't matter a whole lot if your serialized string isn't very readable, because ultimately, at the deserialization end, all you have to do is to use the same approach, just in a reverse order and you will be able to construct your original data structure back. And that in a nutshell is the concept behind serialization. So throughout the duration of all my explanations, I have been using sending information over a line as an example, 
Obviously, that's not the only application of serialization. As mentioned earlier, if you want to write a data structure to a file, you're going to have to do that as well. Or if you want to make a deep copy of a data structure, that means you want to duplicate a data structure and all its contents into a new variable, you're going to have to do serialization as well to extract all the pertinent data that is involved with this data structure. So right, now that we've taken a look at the concepts behind serialization, as well as some of its applications, let's jump in to take a look at some popular representations of serialized data. The first one we've already seen. It's called JSON and stands for JavaScript Object Notation. You've seen both forms of it, both expanded for readability as well as compacted into one line. Both these representations are valid and in fact represent the exact same data structure. In JSON, all elements are comma separated. Arrays are denoted with square brackets, whereas objects, which contain attribute value pairs, are denoted by curly braces. We can tell the depth of an embedded object by counting how many unclosed brackets or braces exist before it. Basically, all you're doing is you're using your curly braces to actually denote the level of nesting of your various items. Other serialization formats include YML and XML. The look of the result produced by these two serialization methods actually are closer to more of markup language kind of syntax. YML is actually pretty interesting in the sense that the number of spaces behind every item is the information used to determine how much nesting is there and what belongs under what. So this is one of the more unusual languages in which the number of spaces actually do matter. XML will be more similar to JSON in the sense that whatever is nested will belong within a set of delimiters. So it's clear what belongs under what. So yeah, these are just a few techniques that are often used for the purpose of serialization. These are definitely not the only ways to do things. In fact, as long as you're able to somehow represent the contents of a data structure as a string, and as long as this string can be deserialized back into a data structure, then you've gotten the job done, no matter how you do it. Anyway, that basically wraps it up for this episode on serialization. I hope it's not too dry. I hope you've learned something interesting from this. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.